Hey, I'm Tim. And I'm Matt at Mr. Maple, and welcome to another Mr. Maple video. We greatly appreciate you taking time to watch this video. Please like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you have any comments, post those in the comment section below. We definitely check that out. And as always, sign up for our weekly emails on mrmaple.com. We add some amazing plants every single week through that. You want to sign up for that email list because that's how you find out first. Hey, if you watch our channel, or if you're new to this channel, you may have heard us saying the term cultivar. So today's question is, what is a cultivar? It's a pretty commonly asked question. We get it a lot in the comments below. What's a cultivar? So we want to do this little quick deep dive and give you an explanation of what a cultivar is. A cultivar is something that we've selected or somebody else has selected for a specific uh, amount of traits. Some traits that could be a spring color, fall color, summer color, a height, a width, and, and a certain amount of time and average for, for that. It's a grafted clone of the original tree. Now it could be grafted or rooted cutting. You know, a very smart plantsman, Barry Yinger, once said that the cultivar definition is something that's been cultivated and therefore asexually propagated. So it's been either grafted or rooted cutting to replicate and clone those traits from the plant that, that wants to be replicated. So therefore you're not taking something from seed. From seed, there can often be variability. There may be a few exceptions with some different cultivars, but in general, you don't want a seedling as a cultivar because there can be variance between the two. So Japanese maples, for example, there's a ton of variability from the parent plant to the offspring. So the seed may look like the parent plant, but they could have a totally different set of traits. Some may be weeping, some may be upright, some may be uh, variegated. So there may be a whole litany of different characteristics that make that plant different from the parent plant that we're wanting to replicate the traits from. So by grafting it with Japanese maples, we've locked in a defined set of traits. So we kind of better understand what we're getting. Like Matt said, a grafted clone on a Japanese maple is an exact replica of why that tree was originally selected. We often see people selling blood good seedlings as the blood good cultivar. And while those trees may look very similar, they weren't always they don't always have the same fall color. They don't often have the same size. There's going to be some different variability on how much sun they can handle. Mm -hmm. And so it's not a pure blood good. It may look similar, mm -hmm. but there's can often be a lot of variability on those plants still, even yeah, from blood good. Yeah, I think blood good's like the easiest example too, and it kind of annoys us. It's probably, probably a pet peeve of ours the most when any red upright's called a blood good. So we're always quick to point that out. You go in a Facebook group and they say, what cultivar is that? And people are like, oh, that's blood good. It's like, yeah. come on guys. It but there's a, a red seed of other characteristics. And yeah. that's not to say it's a lesser tree. Some of my favorite trees are seedlings. My grandmother was growing Japanese maple seedlings in the 1950s. And they make some awesome plants. But with the, a cultivar, we've locked in a defined set of traits. So we know what we're looking for. We've selected that defined set of traits. We've replicated it with our grafting. And then from there on, we're gonna be able to control those, like know what we're looking for. So you're gonna know the difference in a Great Dane and a Chihuahua. You're gonna know the difference in a Makawi Yetsabusa and a Seri or an Emperor One that may be getting a lot larger. So, there, so we can kind of give a defined set of traits and that way you can see how those traits replicate and what they're, what they're going to do going forward and make a better prediction for how, what you want. If somebody wants a dwarf compact variety, you know, it's better to start out with a dwarf compact variety than to get a gigantic tree and be cutting it back constantly to try to maintain that dwarf compact trait. You know, I've seen people have an upright tree and they've said, I want this to be a weeping tree. And so they've got some rocks on it. They're doing all these different things. You know, if they started out with a cultivar that was already curated for having those weeping traits, it'd be a lot easier. You, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. There's already one that probably does that thing. Yeah, and a, a grafted cultivar, like Matt said, it's easiest to think about that as a dog breed, like you pointed out, because you can realize that a grafted cultivar is almost like a pure bread. Yes, there may be some environmental uh, things that give some differences, mm -hmm. like a, tr a tree may get more water in one condition yeah. and grow in a better uh, I mean, because of a for example, time. if you're in Texas, you're going to get 10 months out of the year of growth. So you might, your tree might get a little bit larger if you're, say, in Dallas than it might in Maryland where you're only getting, you know, you're getting a longer winter period. But we have a locked in set of traits. So you're going to have a, a, the same spring, summer, fall colors. Mm. You're going to have a lot of traits that this tree was originally selected for. And the reason these were selected is because they were amazing. And while seedlings can be amazing, we don't really know because they haven't been yeah. evaluated and went through an extensive process to make sure that it is the very best of what it is. So you can think of it as basically a purebred, a dog breed, 
versus a mutt, which may be a, make an awesome dog, mm -hmm. but we don't really know what's going to happen with yeah. that plant until you grow it and you find out. You get a little bit more of an educated understanding of what you're what you're getting, uh, so that you can plan better for what you're doing. So, mm -hmm. especially with Japanese maples, an easy way to understand it is that defined set of traits, and it, it, and a dog breed is a you know good analogy for that really. So you don't end up with completely the opposite of what you're going for. And uh, there's a lot of different ways to do it. We may actually even do a video on grafting versus rooted cuttings. Now, I feel the best Japanese maples are grafted, and we may do a whole deep dive on that, explain grafted versus non. But that's why, the way we typically curate our cultivars of Japanese maple is to carry on those traits with a graft. Like Matt mentioned before too, a Japanese maple from seed has a lot of variability. You can look at me and Matt, we're both seedlings from our parents. <laughs> and but we're very different there's some things that may look similar to us like we both have big noses yeah <laughs> Tim's a much weaker strand <laughs> hey, <laughs> he can handle full sun i do acquire some protection from the hot afternoon sun. <laughs> this is true so there's some different characteristics there just between two brothers and, and japanese maples are a lot like that and in that there is a large level of variability from seed there'll be a certain amount of plants that will look more like the parent plant but we might not know what the, the other parent plant was that the seed wasn't collected from. It could have hybridized, you know, you may have had an Osakazuki, and just because it was an Osakazuki, you had some red seedlings in there, Osakazuki might not have been the only influence on those seeds. So there, yeah. may, there may have been a, a litany of other things it could be. And we have right here a grafted clone of Summer Gold. Mm -hmm. This is a selection that was selected in Italy, mm -hmm. and by grafting it and continually grafting it, this is the exact same tree that was selected in Italy that has such amazing golden fall color. Yeah. We've grown summer gold seedlings here at the nursery, mm -hmm. but that gold spring and summer color that this one was selected for, summer gold, mm -hmm. they're often not there. a superior. Yeah, yeah they're yeah, often I mean. not a superior. And by getting a grafted clone of summer gold, we've got an amazing plant that we know what it's going to do. We know that mm -hmm. it's going to have that extra vibrant uh, yellow color. And it's going to be able to be a little more sun tolerant than a lot of other yellow selections. Yeah, I think with Japanese maples, the best way to get your cultivar is a grafted clone. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the best way with a Japanese maple to have a good root system and a healthy plant. Um, we may do a grafted versus non-grafted deep dive sometime. And certainly mm -hmm. there's a lot of different plants. When we're thinking about, you know, a camisiparis, for instance, that may be a plant that roots very easily. And you could have cultivars that are on their own roots but it may not always be the way it's curated. With Japanese maples, the superior way to get one of the most healthy quality cultivars mm -hmm. would be from graft. Yeah, and when you get a grafted Japanese maple, you have a high quality tree in your landscape and garden. You're gonna always wanna keep a hold of the cultivar name. And that's one yeah. of the reasons we often keep those tags on so you can know exactly what you got. Because you've got a Camaro when it comes to Japanese maples. You've got one of the best selections. People often send us emails and they say, hey, what's my Japanese maple? And often, nine times out of ten, it's a seedling Japanese maple. People often will find people who are growing seedlings, their neighbors. Those are from seed. They're not a grafted selection. If they come off your neighbor's tree and grew up from seed and came up, they're not going to be exact clone of your neighbor's tree. Mm -hmm. They may be similar, but we don't know the exact characteristics that they will actually have. And so to always remember, when you have a grafted selection, you basically got the top of the line when it comes to Japanese maples. You've got one that was selected for having exceptional qualities, exceptional traits. Yeah, I, we can get into a whole video too on how to select Japanese maples. That's a whole process as well. What we do at our nursery is if we're gonna name a, a seedling, we graft it first and foremost to get it on a better root system. So it's gonna live longer, it's gonna be healthier. But then we evaluate that versus the five things closest to it. And then we have to explain, is it better than this or different and how? And if you can't answer that, then it doesn't need to get into cultivation. It probably doesn't need a name. We do get a good amount of people that contact us and they have a seedling from Bloodgood and they say, gosh, I'd really like to name this after my Uncle Bob. He was a great guy. He's so cool. We're going to call this one Uncle Bob. And then the next person calls and they say, I've got this red upright and we would like to call it Aunt, Aunt Susie. Yeah, yeah Aunt, Aunt Betty, Aunt Susie. And uh, you, you kind of you see where we're going with this. It needs to be something that's uniquely different and interesting. And I think a lot of the cultivars are, as you get into the nuances and you learn about them, there are definitely some that are similar. And there's a lot, you know, as we get more and more cultivars, there's certainly some that are more similar to something that's already out there. The, the best thing about Japanese maples 
And some people will say, oh, there's getting to be lots of cultivars of Japanese maples out there. And there are. Mm -hmm. But right now, there's a good amount of cultivars out there that are starkly different. Yeah. The more, and some quality ones. And the more you get to know these plants, mm -hmm. and the more you start to see their differences, you realize their merits. Mm -hmm. um, there, there are some that are, that are more similar. And uh, the ones that are very similar... We tend to not produce things that are too yeah. similar. It, we it, like things that are going to have different characteristics and go out there and be a little bit more unique. I mean, exactly. we have over 1,200 cultivars here at our nursery, and so we try to evaluate against those two, especially if we're naming something. We're gonna compare very, very harshly against what's already out there. We're, we're the bit, biggest critic yeah. when it comes to introducing cultivars, because we travel all around the United States, all around the world, bringing, yeah. getting cultivars. If it's not shocking and on us, we're not doing it. Yeah, it, it's got to stand out, it's gotta be something unique, and it's gotta be something special. That's the reason why it's selected, and that's why it's so important to get a grafted yeah. or a known cultivar versus a seedling. Seedlings are, can be make great trees, but would you rather have a tree that has good fall color or would you rather have a tree that has great fall color? Yeah, and that and, helps too just to identify what you have so you know that this summer gold is going to have these traits. And if somebody comes out with a tree that's exactly like summer gold, you're going to be like, hey, I know that tree. That, that's the same thing. Yeah. We already have summer gold. Why are you reinventing the wheel? That's a summer gold. And so it helps to define those characteristics and it helps kind of to get, you know, a format for what these things are. Now, you can actually go on our website, and you can go to the Mr. Maple Files section. This is a fun area to look at different cultivars and species of maples and thousands of other plants. It's a deep dive because there is a lot of information in there. They're typically about 20 a page, and I think we're somewhere in the 80-plus range on pages. So there's a lot of content in there. But if you want to learn more about cultivars, that's a great way to go look at them. Um, and, and you can actually filter it down different ways to look at different settings if you want to look at azalea cultivars or Japanese maple cultivars or conifer cultivars or just, you know, whatever you're looking for there. But that's a great way to learn more. And uh, we hope you've enjoyed this quick discussion on what is a cultivar. And uh, hopefully this is something that helped broaden your understanding of that and, and was beneficial to you. And we greatly appreciate you watching this video. As always, like and subscribe and sign up for our weekly emails on mrmaple.com. That 10 at 10 is where we're listing all these new cultivars and all the ones that have sold out and are getting relisted on Mr. Maple again. So if you're looking to find out what's new and interesting, it's a great way to learn. Uh, we greatly appreciate y'all. Hey, if you like this content, there's two ways to support us. You can either shop on Mr. Maple or share it with others. We greatly appreciate both. God bless. And have a great day. All you have to do to get involved in the giveaway is like, subscribe, and share our video. Then under every single video you want, you can go and comment, I dig Mr. Maple. And every single time you comment, you'll be entered to win a Mr. Maple hat. So we're going to be doing a giveaway for one of these hats. We're coming up on 8,000 subscribers. Get involved.